Hello everyone, this is Raj Bindre from Creative Wandering. Welcome back to another exciting edition from those who dare to learn differently. I have an intriguing question for you today. Listen carefully. Have you ever really seen a tree? Now let me repeat that for you in case you don't believe your ears, all right? I repeat the question. Have you ever really seen a tree? I bet most of you haven't. Not really. Not in the way we are about to see. Do you know where the substances that make up all the wood, the branches, the bark and leaves of a tree come from? Most people assume it's from the soil that the tree simply pulls nutrients from the ground to grow its massive form. But the truth is far more remarkable. 95% of a tree's substance, hold your breath, comes from the air. Through the incredible process of photosynthesis, the tree takes in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and transforms it into the very building blocks of its own body. In the process, it releases precious oxygen back into the air we breathe. So, the next time you see a tree, remember, it's not just earth and wood, it's air, it's water, it's stardust. 95% of a tree's substance comes from the sky. Sure, you have seen bark, leaves, branches. You have called it the oak tree or pine or redwood. But that's not seeing a tree. That's seeing a label, a concept. Today, we are going to strip away those labels and see a tree as you have never seen it before. What if I told you that this tree is not just a tree and it's a living, breathing part of a vast cosmic dance? Now let's go deeper. Inside each leaf, millions of cells are hard at work. They are capturing sunlight, turning it into energy. The tree is literally eating light. This Douglas fir's thirsty roots draw nutrient-filled water toward its trunk. The tree acts like a giant water pump. Thick bark protects thin layers of tubes where fluids move up and down the tree. Far above us in the tree's needles, photosynthesis takes place. The tree uses sunlight to produce energy-rich, sugary sap that flows down the outermost layer of tubes. 
but deeper inside, we find hair-thin fibers that transport water skyward. We're heading along a direct route that connects the deepest roots to the highest needles, which need water for photosynthesis. escapes from tiny pores on the needles. This helps keep the forest cool. And water vapor can collect into clouds and eventually fall as rain. You see the wonderful architecture inside a leaf that makes it what it is. Look at these tubes that are transporting water throughout the plant or the tree. Imagine who has put together all this pipeline in every single plant and every single tree out there. Look at how the plant has learned how to transform sunlight into food. Look at how it has made glucose from sunlight and now it's going to transport this all over the tree. A photon of light splits a water molecule instantly creating an oxygen molecule and releases it into the atmosphere. Yes, that's right, the very oxygen we breathe. Do you feel that breeze? The tree feels it too. It's constantly responding to its environment, sending chemical signals and adjusting its growth. Trees are ancient beings that have been around for over 400 million years. Imagine them as wise elders, standing tall and rooted whispering tales of resilience across long stretches of time. They've seen continents drifting, danced with the dinosaurs and weathered the ice ages. We humans are the newcomers, striding into the cosmic stage a mere 200,000 years ago. Picture us as curious sprinters, our brains buzzing with invention and art. We have built empires, penned epics, and pondered existence under the star-studded skies. In comparison, the trees are steady and patient. Humans are restless sprinters. Imagine a marathon where the trees pass the baton to us, saying, slow down, young ones. The finish lines? That's eons away. So... Whether you are under an ancient banyan tree or typing on your iPhone, remember, we are all stardust, bound by time, sharing this pale blue dot which we lovingly call Earth. But a tree isn't an island. It's a home, a food source and a climate regulator. It's connected to every living thing around it. So fungi are essential links in the cycle of life. But some fungi establish partnerships with plants while the plants are still alive. And they are just as important. This is the Luckham Oak. It germinated from an acorn in the year 1762 and it's one of the oldest plants in Kew. Its roots are covered with a fungus, but that's not an affliction. That's the reason why this tree was able to live for so long. 
Because the fungus can do something that the oak tree can't. It can extract nitrogen directly from the soil, and then the oak tree collects it from the fungus. And in return, the fungus takes sugars from the sap in the roots of the oak tree. So it's a mutually convenient arrangement, a symbiotic relationship. In fact, we now know that around 90% of the species of plants on the earth depend upon fungi one way or another. And if we zoom in really far in, we see that the tree, like everything else, is mostly empty space. Atoms dancing in a cosmic ballet. Those atoms, they were forged in the heart of the stars. This tree, you, and me, we are all made of stardust. So the next time you see a tree, really see it. I mean really see it. See the miracle of life it represents. The billions of years of evolution. The complex web of relationships that it is part of. Because when you truly see a tree, you are seeing the entire universe. You are seeing yourself. Now, have you ever really seen a tree? Yes, now you have seen one. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to this channel in all your circles. Also please fill the Google form by clicking on the link given in the description section of this video on YouTube. We will keep you informed about the launch dates of your favorite courses. Thank you.